There are so many micro SD cards for your Steam Deck, all sorts of different speeds, different sizes, whether they're real or whether they're fake. So how do I know which one to go with? I initially, in my top 10 tips for new Steam Deck users, you can find it up here, said that I would go with any micro SD card that has the A2 marking on it. But a lot of you pointed out that the Steam Deck can't take advantage of any of those speeds because of the limiting factor of the micro SD card reader that's on there being UHS one. So spending the money on an A2 card is a complete waste. So I bought an A1 card and an A2 card, but we're gonna test that out today. I'm also throwing in an A1 PNY card that I have because it is very similarly spec to the A2 SanDisk card, which we're gonna go over in just a little bit. So let's first take a look at the hardware, being the Steam Deck and the fastest card it can support. So the Steam Deck has a UHS-1 microSD card reader. So theoretically, the highest or fastest that it can support is 104 megabytes per second for reads and for writes. Taking a quick look on Amazon and majority of the cards found are listed for either at that speed or more. And there are so many variations with all sorts of different symbols. The two I bought have the read speeds listed right on the packaging. However, the A1 SanDisk card doesn't list the write speeds when the A2 card does. Why? The whole point of an SD card is for me to write information to it. Shouldn't I know the write speeds to it? If you look at the back of the packaging, it just states that the write speeds are less. Less in what way? How am I supposed to know what the write speeds are? This is true for almost all A1 cards across the board. Looking online, this trend just continues on with every single brand. But we could find out at least the minimum speeds that these are rated for based on the markings. So let's go over what these markings are. First are the markings SDSC, SDHC, and SDXC. These are SD standard capacity, high capacity, and extended capacity, respectively. These talk about the different ranges of capacities available for all your cards. You'll more than likely be looking at getting anything 64 gigabytes or larger. So we're mainly gonna be looking at SDXC cards. Next, we're gonna be looking at the speed class rating. There are three categories in this section, each with their own symbol, because why not? Let's just make this as confusing as the USB standard, if not more. But they're pretty easy to understand because they all talk about the same exact thing, minimum sequential write speed. So the first one is speed class. This has a large C with a number in the middle. That number is the minimum sequential write speed. So C4 is four megabytes per second, C6 is six megabytes per second, and C10 is 10 megabytes per second. So that means the card at minimum will run at that specific speed or it can go higher, but it's going to at least go that speed. Then there is UHS speed class, which has a U with a number in it. Whatever that number is in the middle, you multiply it by 10 megabytes per second. And that again is the minimum sequential write speed. So a U3 labeled card has a minimum sequential write speed of 30 megabytes per second. The last one is video speed class, which is the newest standard of the bunch. It has a V with a number next to it. That number is again, the minimum speed. So V30 is 30 megabytes per second, V60 is 60 megabytes per second, V90, 90 megabits per second, and so on. Kind of get the drift. They're all talking about the same thing. Why? Because the main purpose for these SD cards is to, well, use it in camera equipment, like your camera, your drone, uh, 360 cameras, whatever else. That's the main purpose for them. Some file formats or some formats for video do require you to have a certain card. For example, my Sony a7 IV is not gonna record a specific file format unless I have a V90 card because the file is so large that it needs to have those high reads and write speeds. If I try to use anything else, it's gonna be too slow, thus it can't record it. Now, since the Steam Deck card reader is UHS-1, any card that is V60 or greater is of no use since those cards have an extra row of pins for those higher reads and writes. So. If you find one, don't really bother getting it for your Steam Deck. Now, there is one more marking that is widely used across micro SD cards, but sometimes you'll find it on a standard SD card. That is application class, which is marked with either A1 or A2. These classes talk about the random reads and writes in terms of IOPS, which is 
input output operations per second. This class allows these SD cards to have apps installed on them and just allow those apps to run like for your phone or for your switch or in this case your Steam Deck. A1 cards can do 1500 and 500 reads and writes while A2 can do 4000 and 2000 respectively at minimum. So what does this mean? Basically the A2 card should theoretically perform better when it comes to playing your games, downloading them, better load times, things as such. So we're gonna take the SD cards that I have that I mentioned earlier, which is the A1 U1 class 10, 128 gigs SanDisk Ultra, I thought that was a mouthful. The A1 U3 V30, 256 gig PNY Elite X, and the A2 U3 V30 SanDisk Extreme. Now you can probably see why I added the PNY card, because aside from its application class, it's pretty much the same specs at being a V30 U3 card. So I'm pretty much expecting the PNY and the A2 SanDisk card to perform pretty similarly. From within desktop mode, I ran a version of Crystal Disk Mark called K Disk Mark to get the reads and writes for these cards before we go into some real world testing. Based on these results, I think in terms of gaming, they're all pretty much gonna perform similarly. The PNY did score a little bit better. So I am expecting that to maybe edge both cards, but for the most part, I think they should all just pretty much be similar. So these are the games we'll be testing. Aperture Desk Job, Little Nightmares, and Spider-Man Miles Morales. I first formatted each card by going into desktop mode and using the partition manager software built in, as apparently some cards could suffer from slow write speeds if formatted within game mode. And I mean like below their minimum speeds for whatever reason. So I then downloaded each game to the internal SSD and then moved them over to the SD card and timed how long it took to get the right speeds. I did it this way because it removes two variables that are not within my control that could affect their testing. One being Steam servers and if they are overloaded, causing slow download speeds, if I were to just download it directly from their servers to the SD card. Or the second thing being my Wi-Fi may be possibly cutting in and out for whatever reason. After doing all that, these are the results I got. We'll start with desk job. And on the A1 SanDisk card, took about a minute, 27 seconds. Not bad since it's a four gigabyte game. I kind of expect that. The PNY A1 card took about 38 seconds, much better. And the A2 SanDisk took about 48 seconds. Again, not bad. Now, Little Nightmares is a little bit more than double the size, coming in at almost nine gigabytes. The A1 SanDisk card took about four minutes, 20 seconds. Nice. The PNY took almost as long at four minutes, nine seconds. And the A2 SanDisk took two minutes, 37 seconds. Now in this, it was pretty interesting to see that the A1 SanDisk card was actually pretty close to the PNY card, meaning even though the card itself is rated for at minimum of 10 megabytes per second, it's been able to keep up. So I don't know if I should be disappointed in the PNY for not being faster or proud of the A1 SanDisk card for being as good. Now, let's go to Miles Morales. This is almost 50 gigabytes. The SanDisk A1 comes in at 25 minutes 29 seconds. It's actually not bad at all. PNY was a bit faster, just shy of 24 minutes at 23 minutes 54 seconds. And the SanDisk A2 came in at almost half of its A1 brother at 15 minutes 37 seconds. So I guess the A2 is going to be the better card when it comes to installing your games. I will add this. The A1 SanDisk card and the PNY during my testing did get pretty hot. And I mean like very hot. The A2 card, however, barely even got warm. The A1 cards were definitely being pushed to their maximum, which is probably why they started to get very hot. And they possibly could have also thermal throttled, which is probably why they both took as long as they did. We can actually calculate the write speeds by taking the size of the game and dividing it by the time. After four gigabytes, both the A1 cards performed pretty similarly. If you look at the speeds after four gigabytes, for Little Nightmares, both the A1 SanDisk and the PNY were within two megabytes a second of each other. And the same goes for Miles Morales. But if you look at the A2 SanDisk card, maintained almost anywhere between 50 to almost 60 megabytes per second. And it was almost at its rated speed when installing desk job of 90 megabytes per second. So I'd definitely say A2 gets a win here. I then tried a quick test to install Miles Morales using my Wi-Fi directly to the SD card. The A2 card was able to install the game and get it into a playable state within 35 minutes. The A1 cards, however, it took almost an hour just to even get it to say play after trying to install it. Speaking of playable state, let's take a look at gaming on all these cards. Now between the PNY and the A2 SanDisk, both showed no difference in load times, 
nor was there anything noticeable in performance that showed a clear victor. I was actually happily playing Miles Morales, and could not tell that I was on a slower card. The A1 Sandisk, however, did occasionally take anywhere from 10 to like 30 seconds extra to load into games like from a cutscene into the actual game and it did get pretty warm but aside from that once you were in the game it performed pretty well like it didn't have any stuttering no other issues with it it was just transitioning from a cutscene into the gameplay was a little bit longer than expected but i was still having quite a lot of fun playing. so based on these results you guys are pretty much right you don't have to go with an A2 card if you don't want to. You're still going to get a very good experience regardless of which card you get. However, if an A2 card can fit your budget, I would say go for it. Or if it's like on sale or if it's like pretty much the same cost, why not just get the better card? It just makes sense. Back when I was searching online to buy the cards, both the A1 SanDisk and the A2 SanDisk were within a dollar of each other. To me, it makes more sense to buy the A2 card if it's not even that much more in the US. Now, I know that's not the case everywhere else, so I would say just shop accordingly, see what fits your budget, see what capacity you're looking for. Shop around, you could even just try and wait for some sales to go on, or if you don't mind the longer install times for AAA title games, you'll be fine with an A1 card. I would try and see if you're gonna get at least a V30 card, mainly because I can't exactly say that the Class 10 or the, the U1, whatever slower SanDisk A1 card is gonna perform that well every single time because maybe I could have just gotten a good card. Maybe you might get a bad one. So I would say at least look for maybe a V30 card. But Sharuk, money is still wasted on the A2 card anyways since you can't take advantage of the extra features like Command Q and Cash. Yes, that is true. But Valve is gonna be updating the Linux kernel or the backbone of the OS from the current 5.13 to something newer because that newer software includes all of the drivers for A2 cards, meaning once that's out, it's probably gonna perform better. So once that's the case, I'm definitely gonna take a look at it because OS 3.4 was rumored to have that fix or that update, but that apparently is not the case. So once that's out, I'm definitely gonna revisit this topic to see if the A2 card is performing better, both gameplay wise and whatnot. So I got a challenge for you. If you have an A1 or an A2 micro SD card for your Steam Deck and you wanna try this test out, let me know what your results were and what card you were using. If you want any recommendations on cards or the ones that I used, I'm gonna have them linked down in the description below. And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one.